We are in Malibu, California this week for a model shoot with Brittany. The full video is over on Anita's channel, but today I thought I would go into a little bit more detail of why this shoot was extremely difficult for me as an introverted photographer. The full video also includes Irene and my wife, Lindsay Coulter. So I can do a lot of voice over here. If you want to go see all of my horrible communication, you can head over to Anita's channel to watch the video. My ideal situation is very photojournalism. Usually I don't like to take control of situations necessarily. And I specifically don't like to take control in situations where there are three other people all standing around and I have to control something in a time sensitive environment. And right now it's okay. Cause at least we're outside. We can go to a few different places, even though the locations, um, the lighting isn't perfect. Um, uh, when we're inside, for instance, in the room or the, the, there's a hallway that we get to eventually, uh, in those situations, it's very, very challenging with all of those people in a very tight space, I feel that I would work very terribly in any sort of kind of commercial environment if there's an art director and a bunch of other people all on set all looking over my shoulder at what I'm doing. For instance, it, I guess it even goes even deeper where if anyone else is in the room, I cannot record this voiceover or if I'm trying to do a video that if there's more than really one person with me, uh, I, just, I just don't do my best work. I think it might come down to a bit of a confidence thing, specifically in this instance, uh, th this is maybe the third time that I've ever shot a model in my entire life, so I have no idea really what I'm doing, what I'm trying to achieve, what direction I, I want the images to go in, and also as I guess somebody that we're in this kind of four photographers, one model challenge that I want my images to be different from everyone else. And I know how everyone else shoots and I'm just trying to do something different by shooting through stairs or shooting through other things, as you'll see, uh, just to create something that's slightly different. And then I ended up processing a lot of the images for the actual, for Anita's video in black and white. Cause I figured at least they would be a little bit different from everything else everyone was doing. And I'm not sure where that really comes from a place of whether it is to legitimately be different or if it is because I'm afraid that if I try to compete and I try to do the same work as them, that I'm going to be less good at it. When Manny Ortiz and I were talking, we did a video on his channel in Japan a couple of months ago about tips for introverted folks and overcoming that hopefully. And one of his big tips is to just kind of fake it until you make it and to come in there with that big personality and uh, just just be the person that you want to be and know that you have kind of your, your ticking time bomb that you can get in there, you can start doing that, you can, you can keep up that energy, you can just know exactly what you're directing and make a lot of great images, but know that there's a little bit of a time clock, a little bit of a time bomb, I guess, uh, that when you reach the end of it that you're really going to feel burnt out. And it's not something that you can sustain for, for a 10 hour shooting day of any sort. Uh, that said, one of the, I guess, examples that I might give is somebody that is very kind of naturally introverted, um, which is Jerry Gionis. He's an incredible wedding photographer. Naturally at home, I feel like he's a bit of a quiet dude. Out on stage, he can, he has a character that he can become. And I'd love to actually talk to him about it because I don't know if this became, if this was a conscious effort, if this was just his, when you put a camera in his hands, this is just the voice that comes out. Or if he just is that naturally introverted slash also extroverted, which I feel like um, I spoke to this in, in an interview that I did a long time ago with my friend, Michael Litt, who is the CEO of a company called Vidyard. And he kind of pointed out the fact that if you're an introvert, you're kind of in the best possible situation because you can learn to be extroverted. You can learn to put that on when you need to put that on. But to learn to be an introverted person, if you're naturally very extroverted, is very, very challenging. So to get back to, I guess, the topic and to hopefully give you some helpful advice here, even though this is my hardest situation that I'm here, that I'm being watched by lots of people trying to work, trying to create something that I'm not sure what I'm trying to create clearly by me holding the flowers in front of my hand um, and just trying to do something different from everyone else. But this is probably more of a comfort thing that I'm I'm used to shooting through things to obscure aspects of the scene just so that I'm able to uh, hide things on specifically a wedding day. And as a wedding photographer coming into a situation like this where most things are usable, that we are more in control of our environment, there's less people here than a typical wedding day. 
And I just find myself going back to the things that I know are comfortable, the things that work, specifically that 85 lens. Manny has called this his, uh, his introvert lens that if you're shy and quiet and you don't want to be that close, 85 is kind of that perfect focal length or even a 7200 if you're a wedding shooter. I just think it's important if you are somebody that doesn't work well in an environment, it's to figure out what environments they are that you do not work well in and to do your best to avoid them or to modify them in a way that actually does work better for you. Uh, now shooting this and knowing this, uh, I have a much better perspective of who I am when I'm put into a situation like this. And I know the things that I can do in the future to make my work a little bit better. I feel like this is also an important thing for why I actually record a lot of my on-camera work as well, that when I can play back and I can actually watch what I've done and I can be there again, I feel like when I'm actually in the moment, I almost, it's like goldfish memory that I don't even remember a lot of this shoot because I was just, I don't know, I was just trying to get it done and I was trying to get it done as fast as possible. And to go back and to be able to watch it as a third party observer, you don't have to have a camera like this on yourself that even if you have just a GoPro up uh, and you're just recording kind of what you're doing and hearing your voice and hearing how you communicate and how people react to it. As an introverted person that really doesn't pick up on a whole lot of social cues, I've found it to be very helpful that in video form when I'm separated from it, it it makes my life a little bit easier to interpret life, I guess, through, through video. Maybe I'm more comfortable watching movies than I am living real life. But that is something that has really helped me significantly when it comes to photography and to communication with people and communication on wedding days is just having that recording of what I was doing. And I feel like this kind of transcends all genres of kind of a lot of things, like all sports. If you're an F1 driver and you're you're racing an F1 race, the first thing you do, or maybe not the first thing if you win, but at some point you're going to review all of that footage. You're going to review the highlights. You're going to see what parts you did wrong and how you can improve in them. And by video recording them, I feel like it is a significantly helpful thing for your future as a photographer. Now, the one big thing, you're going to hate your voice. Everyone hates their voice. I hate my voice. I hate seeing myself on camera. It took me so long. I've been on YouTube for since 2008, I believe, is when I recorded my first video. And it really took me until maybe two years ago to be even remotely comfortable on camera. Looking back, if I wish that I would have just kind of sucked it up and just started doing it more and more and more and, and found where I could actually do it. I discovered that if I am alone, I know that I have final edit. This is why it's very hard for me to hire an editor ever. That if I'm sitting in front of a camera and I'm recording and then I know that I'm going to be the one editing it and putting it all together, that that is kind of my comfortable place. My non-comfortable place is that if I am out shooting a video and somebody that I do not know is going to be editing it and seeing all the, the behind the scenes stuff that I'm just absolutely terrible in, uh, that is a fear of mine. So I know that if I'm just recording the footage and also editing it and being the one that puts it online that at least I can be comfortable with myself. I feel like you also learn a lot more about yourself when you're, or at least like kind of same goes for photography that when you learn and you see those little small cues, it's like, okay, like I, I like what I did here. I like this section. Um, let's improve on this in the future. And like photography, there's really no shortcut to this, that this is uh, a challenging thing that I still have to work on every single day. And by just putting in a little bit of work and finding the things that work for you, they really do go a long, long way. Um, by becoming comfortable in front of a camera, I feel like it pushes, or at least it pushed me so far out of my comfort zone to actually get in front of a camera and to speak to a camera. But still, I knew that I was in that safe place because I was recording it myself uh, alone in a room and then I was fortunate enough to be able to edit it as well. So if you need some editing advice, there's lots on YouTube. You can learn that and maybe an afternoon you can learn the basics. And moving forward, you're able to kind of put all of your own footage together which is great for marketing material for your photography company or if you want to put stuff on YouTube. If you have no desire for that and you just want to run a GoPro just to record exactly kind of what you're doing so that you're able to look back on it and have a better perspective, um, I think that, that is totally 100% worthwhile. I think since you have that footage, you might as well at least use those small clips on Instagram as well to show that quick little behind the scenes to get people like, oh wow, this was just in a parking lot and you found a, a tree and this is how that photo came together. Uh, so if you're able to do something like that, I feel like it helps business and it also helps uh, you as a photographer overall. 
some other tips for introverted photographers and things that have helped me and still continue to this day to help me a lot is if you have somebody that's actually there that's in charge of styling, in charge of posing, in charge of actually setting up shots and you're able to work on your lighting, your composition and make sure you're getting good expressions rather than focusing on absolutely everything. I've discovered that that helps a lot and I know maybe this is an unpopular opinion because you're offsetting a lot of the what the Im final image looks like to somebody else, uh, but I feel like it's an important stepping stone when, I would say maybe once or twice every wedding season, I'll have just the dress shop owner or somebody come in and do kind of styling on the day for at least the the bridal portraits and it is incredibly helpful so if that is something that you struggle with maybe bring your significant other or bring a friend or somebody that is a little bit more mindful when it comes to posing and they can kind of help set that section up and then you'll know what works you'll have more confidence going in i think with this shoot specifically one of my big things was that i just was not confident in knowing exactly what i wanted and how to get that so by shooting this and by reviewing the footage and looking at the the images that i captured i'll know for next time what worked what didn't work and what not to do and and what to do but having somebody there that would actually have helped pose things would have basically freed me up to do more of the photography side of things where I could have uh, pivoted around a lot more and found different locations and found different perspectives rather than stressing myself out on trying to pose, which was taking, I would say like 80, 90% of my energy. Um, and the photography was just kind of all second nature. And I was just wh whatever the most comfortable shot to do was for me was what I was doing. Um, whereas if I had somebody else to help stand in and to, to help me out that way, it really would have created significantly better images. One last tip, I'm going to close kind of on this tip, and I think it's a very, very important thing for the life happiness of your business. And if you are interested in doing wedding photography or you're interested in doing shoots like this or you're whatever you might be interested in doing, it is to market yourself as who you actually are. Because if you're marketing yourself as this like out, out of the box, uh, crazy extroverted individual that creates all this crazy stuff, you're going to continue to get hired for that and it's going to stress you out. So focus on what you actually want to do. Start building your dream portfolio today and know that when you build that dream portfolio, even if you put some of your own money into it, that that's all going to come back because over your lifetime, this is a long game. And the more that you create now, the more that's going to pay dividends for the rest of your life. Thanks for watching today. Hopefully you didn't hate the voiceover, the fact that it was just so long. Uh, that's the end of our shoot here out in what appears to be an episode of the OC with that party behind us. Uh, thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and uh, drop a comment below if you feel like talking about pizza, because I always do.